Tilty's barking at a turkey. There's a tom turkey all fanned out out there with a few hens. <laughs> Got Tilty's attention. <laughs> He's a strutting. Is there a turkey? Is there a turkey out there? Oh, is there a turkey? A turkey tildy. Time to tackle the crazy tree. <laughs> Let's take another look at this thing. Okay, I got that piece is busted off there, and then it's caught between those two there. And it goes up over that, and it's hung up in that crotch of that cherry tree. And then this half is stuck in the crotch of that cherry tree. And the crotch is all messed up there. It looks really weak. But it's hard to say. It might just be fungus. So I don't believe I need to put a come along on that, but I'm going to just in case it wants to just kind of like hang there in space because one thing's holding it from one side, another thing's holding it from the other side. I'll put the come along on it in case I need to give it a nudge. Well, part one came down pretty much as expected. That's hung up up there like I thought it would be. See if the come along will pull this over and get it out of the way. And then I think we, I'll get some of this cleaned up, notch that cherry and pull it in the same direction. And I think it'll all go pretty good. I think so. So far so good anyway. I'm just going to cut a notch in the back of this, cut a little bit of a cut here, and then just pull it and just have it, it'll hinge here at this cut, and then it should fall down. Where it's hung up in this little maple up here, I'd like it if I could spare that maple from getting damaged because it's got some nice shape to it, but who knows? I don't think so. I think it might get squashed, especially when the big section comes down. It's like I said, that big section's hung up up there, but it's busted right here. See, it's busted right here. And the only reason why it didn't break because it got hung up in that cherry over there. So everything is just, one thing's leaning on another and it's, <laughs> really gotta pay attention. <laughs> okay, I cut a notch like that just a cut here and I'm going to pull it that way and this will start to close up when this starts to open up and this will break and just fall to the ground and hopefully that will slide down. Well my friends that went according to plan. If I would have hooked the cable to the bottom of that leaning section, it would have only been advancing like an inch at a time. But when I cut that notch, it acted like a hinge. And then I just gave it some tension with the come along like you saw. And it folded up at the hinge and came crashing down. And it gave it the momentum that it needed to come sliding down the rest of the way. So that's out of the way now. And I'm going to tackle that other uh, section of cherry. Now this last section of cherry, I don't think that I would tackle this without the come along on it. The reason is, the way that this maple has fallen into the crotch of the tree, it might just want to hold it right up. After I cut my notch and be working my back cut, it might just want to hold it there. I've seen this happen before. So, you don't want to get to that point and then go, oh, I got to put a cable on it because then you are in the danger zone because things could happen really, really fast.
I don't want to be in that predicament. I've got the come along, I've got the cables, I've got Lori here to be working the come along, give it a little bit of tension if I need to, and that's the way I'm going to play it. It might just come down as soon as I start cutting the back cut, it might just come tumbling down. But, like I said, that's not the time to be thinking, oh, I better sneak in there and put a cable on it. So I'm going to play it smart uh, and safe <laughs> as possible. So I'm going to uh, get the come along on it, get a little bit of tension on it, cut the notch, have Lori give a little bit more tension. I'll start cutting the back cut and we'll see how it goes. If it gets hung up up there, we'll just give it more tension and pull it down. I'm pretty confident it's going to come down without any trouble at all. I mean, we're not in a danger zone. We're going to stay right out of harm's way. But uh, nonetheless, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, make good footage anyway. <laughs> That went pretty darn slick. Without the come along, that would have been a real dangerous game. But we cut the notch, give it the little nudges that it need, it could be right out of harm's way. It actually all went as planned. The tree is down. Cut it all up, there'll be a bunch of firewood. Hopefully some new life will grow up off of that stump. Be back as good as new. You've seen this come along before. You've seen it involved in a lot of my tree projects. Only takes a few minutes to hook a cable to a tree, takes the guesswork out of everything, put the tree right where I want it. In the situation I had today, you can see it was a must have. This cherry tree was just standing there being held in place by the maple that fell on top of it. You're underneath it, pushing like a fool. <laughs> You're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. The come along, already hooked in place before I started cutting the tree. We got right out of the way, pulled it down. Everything went as planned. Perfect. If you're going to live this type of lifestyle where you're cutting trees and moving heavy logs, or maybe you're getting your vehicle stuck, stuff like that, you got to have a come along. But I'll tell you what, you spend cheap, you're going to get cheap. And when you have a situation like this, where you have trees that are questionable, they're putting your structures in danger, or you're putting your life on the line to take them down, that's not when you want to be second guessing your equipment, or even more so, have it fail on you. I bought this one, I think I was in my late 20s. It was a lot of money back then, but I've been using it. Here, here I am again, using it again today. I trust it with my life. Never fails me. And it's got the power to do everything I've ever needed it to do. I'm putting a link down below. You can look at these. They sell them now. This one has cable. They sell them with a rope. I don't know. I shy away from the rope for a lot of reasons. Mainly, if you're handling that rope and you're getting your sweat all over it, you're putting salt all over it, and then you put this away, maybe the mice might start chewing on it to get at that salt. Then you've got a situation where you need to come along and you see that mice have been chewing on the rope. I don't know if that happens, 
but I know mice <laughs> and they like to chew on everything. They're not gonna chew on my cable and I like that. So I go with the cable. So mission accomplished <laughs> once again. Well, the trees went pretty good. The pines are next in line. Let's hope it goes just as smooth. Yeah. So I'm going to answer a few questions here, and then we're going to head down to the 10-acre parcel and drag some more brush over there. we got a lot of rain coming, and we're going to burn the brush over there. Okay, let's get started. What animal do I fear the most? Well, like I said before, I don't walk around the woods afraid of anything. Um, much safer here than in the city. This is a much safer place to be. Yeah, the city's a dangerous place. People are getting robbed and stabbed and killed and, oh my God, rape, pillage, and plunder over there. And out here, it's pretty safe. But if I had to pick an animal that I'd be most concerned with, it would be a bear with cubs. Okay. I don't care how experienced of a woodsman you are. You get in a situation where you run across a bear with cubs, especially if you startle them uh, or if you get between them, you could have an unhealthy situation on your hands. And you could get there really fast. Yeah. But if I were to pick what creature I fear the most, it would be man. Yeah. People. You know, an animal, you might get in a situation where the animal feels threatened and attacks you, but people, they're always looking for something to be disgruntled over, something to be offended by, and then they hold a grudge forever, which is ridiculous. You take a species as, a, as uh, intelligent as we are, and they act like that, and it's too bad. Yeah. So, what animal do I fear the most? I fear man. And some women. <laughs> okay. You seem like a happy-go-lucky guy. I'm wondering if you have any pet peeves. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's another question, and kind of these go hand in hand. What kind of music do you like? Do you ever listen to the radio? Okay. Do I have any pet peeves? Undisciplined children and pets, and I've mentioned that before. But just kind of like one little pet peeve is when somebody leaves like the cabinet doors open or the drawers open, especially the dresser drawers, when they're out a little bit and the clothes is hanging out. I don't know why that bothers me. I'm not a neat freak. I don't have the cleanest house. We both like a clean house, but we don't step down the steps and onto pavement. We step down the steps and onto dirt. And right now, it's into mud and with two border collies in the mud. So the house isn't always as clean as we would like it to be. So my little comment about the dresser drawers and the clothes hanging out, ah, why does that bother me? It might make you think like I'm a neat freak, but I'm really not. I don't know why that bothers me. <sighs> Another thing that really bothers me is songs that are too repetitious and just keep repeating themselves. My God, it drives me crazy. And songs that butcher the English language I don't know why, but it drives me crazy. With the double, double negatives all the time? I don't know. Like, for instance, right? <laughs> I never had no one that I could count on. Sounds like you had somebody to count on. Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from loving you, babe. Kind of sounds to me like there are places that will keep you apart, right? And on that subject, this one really takes me out. <laughs> lover, 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 you don't treat me no good no more. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell he's trying to say. Yeah. What kind of music I like? Not that kind. 
I like most music, most types, depends on what I'm doing, but I haven't listened to the radio in probably two years. Yeah, it's been a long time. For the most part, I like a lot of country music, some of the older stuff, but nowadays when they're mixing country with rap, like they say, you mix country with rap, you get crap. And whoever come up with that was spot on. Spot on with my feelings. Yeah. Okay, one more quick one here. Ah, it's not a question, though. I'm going to talk about diets. Ever since I mentioned that I had cancer, lots of people are suggesting all kinds of diets, like the raw food diet, the alkaline diet, the keto diet, and so on. Every cancer fighting thing that's on the internet has been suggested to me probably a hundred times over. And I appreciate all the information, but I did a lot of research and I'm up on the game. Yep. Ah, the alkaline diet, the raw food diet, they all sound great, but there's no possible way that I could eat like that and do the work that I do. No. I'm very familiar with the keto diet. Um, since I was diagnosed with cancer, I have changed my diet drastically. I'm not strict keto, but I'm very, very low carb. It was quite a transition, I'll tell you. Took me a little bit of time to get used to it. I'm more used to it, but I'm not going to go without all the things that I love. So every now and then I'll have a carb up day and I'll put that in line with the day that I'm going to do a lot of work. But I'll tell you, I got to give the keto thing some credit because since I changed my diet and went very low carb, um, the old way of eating by 10 o'clock in the morning, I am hungry and I'm stuffing food in my face. <laughs> Hungries, right? And now sometimes it's like 1.30 pushing 2 o'clock and I go, oh, I better go and eat. And I check the time and it's like way past lunchtime. I've lost a little bit of weight. Keto is the best diet for losing weight, but I don't want to lose weight. So I've been just eating more and more and more of low carb foods. So far, so good. I'm going to give it a good run of it. But like I said before, I'm not going to go without all of the things I love. If I have a choice to live five years with stuff that I enjoy or 10 years by going without all of the stuff I enjoy, well, I want to stay happy. Okay. So I'm going to go for the five year plan. <laughs> Lori hates it when I say this. I'm not here for a long time. I'm just here for a good time. <laughs> so that's all, the, all I have for you today. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss Frankie and the Boss